This lecture is going to be on clouds. First, we're going to talk about terms that we use to describe the cloud or name the clouds. First up is stratus clouds. Stratus clouds are very sheet-like, so they're very flat and much like a sheet would be. Next up, we have cumulus clouds. Cumulus is a root word meaning pile or heap. So those are your big, white, puffy clouds. Cirrus means a curl of hair, so they're going to be up high in the atmosphere, and they're going to be really wispy. You might hear the term um, cirrus describing wispy hair. Nimbus, these are clouds that rain. So it could be cumulus clouds that are raining, or it could be stratus clouds that are raining. Alto means high. So if I could have an alto stratus cloud, an alto cumulus cloud, and cirro is even higher yet, cirro stratus or cirro cumulus. So what do we mean by high or really high? Alto, which was high, that's from about 10,000 to 20,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Cirro, which is really high, we're talking about greater than 20,000 feet. This goes up to the top of the troposphere. Remember, all of our clouds occur in the troposphere. Occasionally, there are some strong thunderstorms that can sort of punch through the troposphere into the stratosphere, but that's just a very tiny bit. And again, anything with rain, you're going to add the word nimbo or nimbus. Okay, so first up, we have stratus clouds. Stratus are low-lying, so less than 8,000 feet. These are uniform and grayish clouds. I remember. I think of these clouds every time we have those really long, just really overcast days. Those are stratus clouds. They can resemble fog that doesn't quite reach the ground. Typically, they don't produce any kind of precipitation, and they're smooth and flat, a lot like, let's say, bed sheets. Next up, we have nimbo stratus clouds. These are stratus clouds, only they're going to produce some kind of precipitation, typically rain or snow. Um, since they're producing the rain, they're going to be darker. They're, so this is going to be your all-day rainy kind of days. Moving up, we have alto stratus. Again, they're going to be a little bit higher. These are composed of ice crystals and water droplets. They're getting to the point where they might be freezing. These are gray clouds that, again, are going to cover the whole sky. That's typical for stratus clouds. And you're going to find these alto stratus clouds right ahead of some weather that's going to bring continual precipitation that like again like the all-day kind of rain. Cirro stratus clouds, stratus clouds higher yet. These are considered fair weather clouds. Uh, you're gonna have a nice day. The sun's gonna shine through them. These are very thin sheet like uh, sheet like clouds. And again because that root word zero they're gonna be at around a height of 20,000 feet. Moving on to the cumulus clouds. These have vertical development, which means they're the big puffy ones. They look like cotton balls. Since the, we don't have alto or zero in front of the word cumulus, they're going to be relatively low, less than 8,000 feet. These are also considered fair weather clouds, but it could potentially mean uh, rain is on its way. Alto cumulus clouds, higher yet. These are small and puffy. They look a little smaller than the, the cumulus clouds because they're higher up, farther away. These are also made of water droplets. You'll tend to get these on warm, humid days, and this also could mean a thunderstorm uh, could be approaching later in the day. Cirro cumulus, higher yet. These are fair, also fair weather clouds. They are also small and puffy, again, just higher up in the atmosphere. Cirrus clouds means thin or wispy, with, um, the root word wispy. These are found, again, very high up in the atmosphere, up to 20,000 feet. These are composed of ice crystals or supercooled water droplets. Remember, we talked earlier in the unit, if the water droplets do not have a solid particle to condense on, they can actually reach below freezing temperatures, but they are still a liquid. These are also considered fair weather clouds. And they are going to point in the direction in which the air is moving. So the air is moving in this direction, wisping them up and away. Next up, we have our cumulonimbus clouds. These are one of my favorite clouds to watch as they develop. These are your big thunderstorms. 
Uh, with cumulonimbus clouds, it, they tend to form in unstable atmospheric conditions, which means an air parcel that is rising up will continually get warmer than the surrounding environmental air, which will aid it moving up even farther. So we get the, can get these strong updrafts. These strong updrafts can create what's called an anvil cloud. So the top where it kind of comes out, this is your anvil. These kind of clouds are the ones that can exceed the troposphere, punch through the troposphere, and enter into the stratosphere if the updrafts are strong enough. Stratocumulus clouds are a mixture of strato and cumulus clouds, hence the name stratocumulus. These are low-lying clouds that will cover the sky and appear to be white or in gray in color. They will often appear in rows or patches. You can see a few rows going this way. They are a combination of the layered stratus clouds and the convective cumulus clouds. They often occur in shallow layer of an unstable air near the surface that is overlain by a stable air. So you have some unstable air, which means you have rising air forming these clouds, but then they kind of get stopped by a layer of stable air on top of them. Okay, so this diagram should be similar to one uh, that is in your notes. We have your stratus clouds down here on the bottom, nice and flat. Your cumulus clouds, your white puffy cotton ball type clouds. Strata clouds, you can see the combination. They're uh, very wide like the stratus clouds and they have some puffs on the top but not nearly as big as a cumulus cloud. Cumulonimbus, so you can see that large vertical development from the updrafts of the unstable atmosphere. Nimbus, remember because we have the rain here. A little higher up we have your alto stratus, so take a look, it's very similar to the stratus clouds, only it's up higher. You have your alto cumulus, your little white puffy cotton ball clouds. Higher yet, you have your strato, uh, I'm sorry, cirro cumulus and your cirrus clouds. So take a moment and fill out the ch chart that is in your notes, and if you need to pause this video, you may. Okay, let's play a little matching game. So the first one down here on the bottom near the ground, what would that be? Take a look at your word bank down here. A cloud on the ground is called fog. Okay, next up, this one. It is low, it is flat, and it is raining, so that would be a nimbostratus. Next up, one just above it. It is sort of flat, low-lying, so that would be stratus. It is not raining, so just a stratus cloud. Next up, these little puffy ones. Notice that they are forming a line. That would be your stratocumulus. Okay, this next one looks a little confusing on the picture, but I'm just highlighting the one in the foreground. So it's this whitish one on the in the foreground. It's got some vertical development. It is not raining. So that would be your cumulus cloud. The one just behind it, this is going to give you big vertical developments. Here's your anvil up here on the top. So that huge cloud is nice dark and gray. That's because it's a cumulonimbus cloud. That's your big thunderstorm clouds. Okay, these are puffy and they are up higher. Since they're up higher, we call it alto. They're puffy, so cumulus, alto cumulus. The one right next to it, same height, so it's going to be an alto cloud, but it is low, flat, sheet like, so alto stratus. Higher yet, so if we're higher, even higher, where it's going to be zero. That is very broad and flat. 
So that would be your zero stratus. The one next to it, thin and wispy. So that would be your cirrus cloud. And last but not least, your puffy ones way up high in the sky, cirro cumulus. Okay, our last topic of discussion for this lecture is the forms of pre precipitation. There's four types of precipitation. We have rain. This is the most common type of precipitation that's coming down. We use a rain gauge to measure how much rain we get. Second, we have sleet. This is when warm air aloft. Aloft means up high. So if you have warm air up high and falls through cold air near the surface, that little raindrop is going to freeze as it hits the ground or right before it hits the ground. Next, we have snow. We're going to form snow if we have cold air aloft and near the surface. So if we have a thick section of snow, it's going to freeze and stay frozen as it falls down. Last, we have hail. This is caused by strong updrafts in our thunderstorms. As the updrafts push the rain droplet up towards the top, or I should say, we'll say sleet is because it's frozen, another layer of ice is going to cover that little rain droplet or sleet. And it's going to fall back down. The updraft is going to push it back to the top where it adds another layer and it falls down. And then again, it's a cycle pattern going up and down. The stronger the updrafts, the larger the hail that's going to eventually fall down. So the hail, at some point, is going to become too large for the updrafts to hold up. And at that point, it's going to fall down. So the stronger the updrafts, the larger the hail can grow before it falls down. In order to form a rain droplet, first you have to have that condensation. Remember, you have to have a condensation nuclei, which is a particle for it to solid, um, condense onto. Then as those air droplets in the cloud, they're going to go through what we call coalesce. As they move around, they're going to collide into each other. As they collide into each other because of cohesion, they're going to stick together. So with enough cohesion and more droplets colliding and growing bigger, Eventually, it's going to become big enough that the updrafts will not stop it or prevent it from falling down, and it will fall down. So this is similar to hail. The stronger the updrafts, the, the larger the uh, rain droplets will be. If there is no condensation nuclei, the water will not condense. So you can get water droplets that are well below freezing temperatures but are still in liquid form. This can become a problem for airplanes that might fly through these supercooled droplets because the airplane acts as a condensation nuclei and the water droplets can freeze on the airplane. In certain circumstances, um, for example the Olympics in China, humans add freezing nuclei, silver iodine or dry ice, into supercooled clouds. So this forces uh, the condensation nuclei into the air that will promote um, condensation and potentially even rain so that the skies will then clear up for the opening day of the Olympics. This is a diagram showing you the different types of precipitation. So we have if we have cold air aloft and cold air on the bottom, so a whole column of cold air, we will get snow. If it's cold aloft, you might have some snow. This is a section of warm air so that snow will then melt. And then if we have cold air down here that melted uh, snow, which would be raindrops here, will then refreeze, forming sleet. In this section, we get what's called freezing rain. So again, we might have some snow up here, but this large section of warm air will cause the, the water to be in liquid form, and it won't freeze until it gets down onto the ground where the ground itself is frozen. And if we have warm air all up and down the, the aloft and down the ground, it will stay liquid and stay a rain.